So the last time you guys saw me on YouTube in front of this camera was roughly about two years ago. And I haven't watched the video since, but um, the video was called Manifestation. And around that time, I was, if I remember correctly, I was just getting back to being my normal self out of a relationship. I had just got a gig to host my first event, got paid $600 for it. I'm just like, okay, I got this thing. Um, under wraps like I, I know what manifestation is and I'm gonna make things manifest right so then you guys never heard from me again and if you follow me on Instagram you know that this last past two years for me have been huge like different photo shoots I've been a part of um, things that have been happening in my life personally people I've been aligning with different opportunities have been presenting themselves because I manifested them but what I'm realizing is that manifestation is a process and trusting is a process so when you have to trust that you have the power and the ability to manifest um, you have to start trusting the universe and we say it in a way that sounds so easy and it is easy but it takes a lot of work sometimes to deprogram yourself from what you've been taught so that you can really look at the simplicity of things because we've been taught that things are difficult we've been taught that things are impossible we've been taught that um, we can't get this if we don't get it this way and we've been so attached to how the things come to us and we're just not necessarily tapping in enough on the fact that they will come to us period it doesn't matter how they will come so today um, I have a story to tell you guys but I first just want to address you know my absence from YouTube I kind of addressed it before but it's also like every time I think about um, a YouTube video that I want to shoot or I'll shoot one and I never edit it and it's like nothing has ever in this last two years hooked me enough to get me to sit in front of the seat until today and sometimes I think about it I'm just like if I would have just stuck on YouTube like I would have been here by now or I would have been doing this but I realize and this is something that I'm very true to um, with myself if I really don't feel moved to do something, I don't do it. And sometimes I check myself because I'm like, are you being lazy? You know, are you not pushing yourself? But sometimes, um, back to the trust thing, you have to trust yourself and know, you have to trust yourself enough to know that when you're ready for something, it will happen. When you're ready for it and when it's ready for you, you two will meet in the middle. So all of that um, pre-story to just kind of let you know what happened for me today I have this saying things don't happen to us they happen for us and I'm gonna get really transparent because that's what I do and I'm starting to I mean I've embraced it but I'm starting to embrace it even more and challenge myself to continue to be more transparent with people because where I am in my life right now emotionally spiritually mentally physically is the best that I've ever been in my entire life and it's because I've been intentional I've been self-aware and I've been doing the work and I've been sharing and when I share there's just a certain energy that comes back to me and I'm replenished and restored and invigorated and ready to you know take it up another notch so I'll just start by saying this this last really altogether I've been self-employed for five years but the last two years specifically this last year has just been so challenging and it's like and I'm a mom for those of you who don't know I have a seven-year-old his name is Justin and um, he is my the center of my life but I'm also trying to build a career and a career that's not based off of like okay here's this I'm a doctor or I'm a lawyer or here's this thing that I sell it's I am my own business right People follow me and people like me because of my story, because of my transparency. They might get reeled in because of my freckles or how my natural hair is or what outfit I'm wearing that day or what funny thing, you know, my son and I are doing. But I find that the people who are my real fan base and the people who have been rocking with me since I was in that cubicle five, six years ago, who have gone down and, you know, followed me since I posted that video about having this idea to just pursue my dreams. Um, Dreams was very foggy at that at that time. I knew that I was a creative person. I wanted to express myself creatively, but I also knew that I necessarily I also knew that I didn't I wasn't in the mental space at the time to even 
explore what I wanted to do creatively, who I was creatively. It took me years. I just started referring to myself as an artist last year because in my mind, the way I was programmed, an artist paints or an artist sculpts or an artist, you know, sings or dances. I am just a hyper creative individual. Ideas are my thing. I'm also a Gemini, so I can adapt, I can transform, I can act, I can model. Um, sky is the limit for me and it took me this last year to be able to stop trying to explain to people what I do. You know, focus on who I am, focus on being, focus on growing and doing dope shit. So I came up with this phrase like, yo, I do dope shit because the anxiety that I would feel from people asking me, hey, who are you? What do you do? And depending on the room I was in or depending on how I gauge that person, I would think about what what things should I say to hook them on. But, you know, but I, I started to realize like that's not my responsibility. My responsibility is to be myself and express myself the way that I see fit. And I started saying I do dope shit. And from that came my boy Brian. Hey Brian, he made me a logo that says I do dope shit. And I started selling tote bags. And the people who buy my tote bags are people who feel the same exact way. Like, look, I'm a mom or I'm a dad, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a singer, but I'm also a security guard. And I do all these different things. You don't have to put yourself in a box because sometimes that box is what literally keeps us in and what blinds us and stops us from coming out of the box and exploring like okay I do this but I also like something on the complete opposite end of the spectrum and that's okay I don't have to choose um so I've been doing that right so this last year I've been on some you know taking all creative um blockers and cuffs chains whatever you want to call it off of me and really honing in on who I am you know I was single for a really long time and that allowed me to really um, look within myself I, I was dating people but dating them in a way that I wasn't necessarily like letting them completely I was protective of myself and my heart and my spirit and I moved the way that I wanted to and here we are now and we're in November of 2017 I just turned 29 my golden year I had a huge birthday party and I've just been scraping for knowledge of self you know and and I shouldn't even say scraping in that way but really like reading books I read the book ask and it is given um, Abraham Hicks and that book changed my life I'm gonna put a link to the book every single person if you're vibing with what I'm saying if you're hearing me if you're watching me and you're seeing the way that I am progressing understand that I'm not doing this on my own you have to seek knowledge you know we take responsibility some of us for we understand that we're programmed right and then some of us take it a little further and those people do what it takes to deprogram themselves and they just stay there but then there's some people who you know take it all the way and understand that when you deprogram yourself it's your responsibility now to reprogram yourself it's like if you live with your parents right and they eat a certain way that you don't like but you say well I eat like this because I live with my parents now you live by yourself but now you're starting to see that some of the same things that were in their refrigerator is in your refrigerator you can't put that on them anymore that's what you chose you know so doing the work to say okay I'm responsible I'm accountable for who I am and where I am now because I have detached myself from society in a way like when you leave corporate there's just this thing that happens to you the first year maybe or the second year you're, you're still finding yourself in some robotic ways but by five years later I'm so free that sometimes I don't know what to do with myself it's always a question of am I doing the right thing because I don't have a boss I don't have HR I don't have co-workers who are what constantly have to like maneuver through I have people who I work with but if they don't want to work with you anymore or if you're not happy with the relationship you can leave you know you don't owe anyone anything there's no contract signed for the most part um, but what it's also done is living this way right and people who are in the cubicle right now if this is something that you want to do understand this living this way can only work if you have an anchor if you have someone and not even someone because that someone is yourself but you need something to hold on to something to have faith in um, something to believe in because there will be times where you don't know the bills keep coming I when I was 23 years old I think I was making the most money I've ever made in my life 
fast forward at 29, there's some things that I was doing at 23 that I can't necessarily do right now financially because I'm making sacrifices. I sacrifice every single day, every single month. I sacrifice holidays, birthdays, I'm not going on trips. Um, sometimes that stuff happens for me and I'm grateful, but I still come from a place where I'm understanding that me sacrificing is going to help me in the long run. Um, it's helped me simplify my life, but also there's times where I'm really, really stressed. And I've noticed that, especially like when this within this last month, I have been snapping on people like, rah, rah, rah. like I've just been strangers in the supermarket. Like this woman almost hit me with her car and I thought that I was about to lose it. But I'm realizing it's because I'm under such pressure to pay bills in my house, to feed myself, feed my child, be there for my child, be happy for my child, be at his football games, drop him off at practice, pick him up, no car, because that's one of the things I sacrifice, taking public transportation, you know, um, trying to figure out like the groceries that I'm gonna buy, like what my budget is, always constantly under this pressure that I know that at any point, all I have to do is say, Chris, just go get a job. I have a degree, you know, I know how to bartend, and I was bartending a little bit here and there, but everything that I was doing that was stopping me from being who I'm being and being who I'm being on social media because I'm so transparent. So what happens with that is I'm doing the work on myself. And the way I think about it is the Universal Bank um, puts a golden coin in the piggy bank, right? But what I do is I take that golden coin and I show it to the world whether it's um, something good or something negative because another thing that I've learned is when we manifest things, we want to think that we can only manifest shiny, sparkly things. You know, our lessons are supposed to come packaged up in a way that we can just say, oh my God, I get it. Thank you. Thank you, money in my bank account. Thank you, new relationship. Thank you, car. But sometimes the, the blessing that you manifest can just explode in your face and you have to work through it. And it's how you work through that obstacle or how you work through that challenge or the kind of character that you choose to display how you treat your friends, how you treat your child when you're extremely stressed out. You work through all of those things and then the gift sometimes is after that. Or that thing is the gift and you start to understand what the reward from it is. Like, okay, well, this situation happened and now I'm no longer friends with this person, but sometimes that's the best case scenario for you. You know, there's all these intricacies and things that happen but you have to have faith and understand that it's all for the greater good. And when you're going through it, sometimes it doesn't feel that way, but it's all for the greater good. So what brought me here today? What is the thing that made me sit down and get back to YouTube after years of putting it off? So I started this sweatshirt company, first of all. Let me just show you guys. I started this sweatshirt company and really it is a brand that started from me using my voice and using my platform and speaking up for the women in my neighborhood. And that, that's a whole different video. But I just wanted to say, just for the sake of this story, North Girls Rock. So if you're from Brick City, hit me up, I got you. I have like nine other cities or 10 other cities at this point, Brooklyn, Harlem, Philly. Um, I have African girls, Caribbean girls, shameless plug, but the link will be down here if you want to order. But anyway, I started this, this popped off maybe about a month and a half ago. And it was cool. I started it. You know, people started ordering. I started to see how many people wanted to be able to rep where they're from. So um, I'm making money, right? But it also costs to make money. When you have a business, there's expenses for your business. So when you have a startup, that's why they call it a startup, there's a lot of startup expenses. So although I'm receiving profits, my bank account just felt like it had a hole in it. Like every time I make money, I have to spend this much money to make more money so I got into a crunch with my rent and I've gone through this in the last five years probably like if I'm gonna keep it real with you maybe like 30 times like I've, I've gone to eviction court so much that they see me and they know me by name some of the people at the rent office follow me on Instagram so every time I make it in with my rent they're like clapping and cheering like we knew you could do it so it's a thing that I'm not necessarily um comfortable with but it's a sacrifice that I know that sometimes I have to make to continue to progress because what happens is I keep progressing so it's not a situation where you know it's like you're beating a dead horse and you want something you want something for years and years and you're not changing anything and nothing's happening no 
I am tweaking and changing and poking and prodding and loving and leaving alone parts of myself, which is also a major key. We'll get into it in these YouTube videos after this, but just to give you an idea of what I have been so busy at work doing, um, what ended up happening is my rent just crept up on me and I missed it. And then the next month's rent, what happens is if you don't pay that next month's rent, you better pay it by the end of that month or in my building you'll get locked out. Like they'll send the sheriff and they'll lock the doors. So I've been literally, there was a time where I only had one day left and I made it happen and the money came. Um, this time was a little bit different than all the other times because I've just been working so, 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 so hard. And it's just like, yo, you're working so hard, but you're still finding yourself in the same position. But I realize that it's not the same position because my mindset is starting to change. I'm starting to, everyone wants to be a business person, but to be a businessman or a businesswoman, you have to cultivate a business mind. And you can be a hustler and you'll be working all the time, or you can be a business person and you can make money and that money can make money and so on and so forth. So I'm in this transition between like, I don't want to scrape every month. I don't want to not have excess. I want to be able to help people. I don't want to always be the one who needs help. So selling these hoodies, you know, money's dwindling and I go to court for rent. Hey guys, how y'all doing? Um, and everyone's just looking at me like, we know you're going to make it. And everyone around me always knows that I'm going to make it. But it's like, sometimes you just need a break emotionally, mentally, like to always be hitting the ground, hitting the ground, hitting the ground, running, running, running. Sometimes you just need to be able to sit down. And that's one thing that I have not conquered yet, but I've realized it. So what I started doing about a month ago is I started going to the gym every morning, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, me and my girls, we go to the gym, we're there by 5 a.m., work out until 6.30. Going to the gym, eating healthily, um, being more conscious of like, if I'm feeling overwhelmed, you know, stopping myself. Just yesterday, today is Wednesday, on Monday, someone stole my groceries on the train. It's a long story, but someone stole my groceries on the train and I had budgeted $50 just for groceries for the week so that I can make lunch and breakfast for Justin and I because I couldn't afford to buy anything out, right? Because my rent is literally due Tuesday. So I lose my groceries, someone stole them. Maybe it was a homeless person. Um, in my mind, you know, I called my mom right after it happened. I was about to cry because I literally could not afford to buy some more groceries that day. So I call my mom and she's just like, you know what, Chris, maybe someone else needed it more than you did. And as soon as she said that, I had to just like breathe and remember the things that I've, I have been reading, especially in Ask and It Is Given. Just remember that I have to know that everything is for the greater good. So my mom said someone else needed it. I took that and I decided to change my mood. Right in that moment, I see a woman running down the steps and she looks familiar. And then she has an I do dope shit bag. And I'm like, Nyambi? And she's like, Chris? So I tell her what happened. She's like, well, just go back to 23rd Street, get on the train and look for the groceries. So while we're on the train, and I love you so much if you're watching this, she's just talking to me, encouraging me. She's like, you know, I can help you sell some sweatshirts. I'm telling her about the whole situation with the rent and all this stuff. She's like, I can connect you with such and such person. And she's just being the pillar that I needed in that moment. And I get to 23rd Street and there's no groceries there none zip zero groceries and I just take a deep breath and I say you know what mom I call my mom back I'm like the groceries aren't here I said I'm gonna call Trader Joe's I call Trader Joe's and the nicest guy answers the phone I can't remember if his name is Kyle Kevin or Ryan but it's one of those because I was just such in a blur that I just don't remember his name but he's like don't worry about it if you have your receipt come back in highlight the things that you don't have and you can get them so they let me get my groceries, they didn't charge me for anything. Shout out to Trader Joe's for that because that allowed me to, I was still frustrated because wait, I get home with all these bags and I realized that I don't have my house keys. So I almost like exploded into smithereens and on Monday, mind you, I have this pressure like Chris, you only have a week to make this money. I come on, I come in the house and I just rest for the rest of the day. Um, I do some work like making logos and doing this stuff, but I come in the house and I start to watch TV and just take my mind off of everything. Tuesday comes, which is yesterday, and I say, you know what, Chris? You should share the story. Talk about what happened on the train. 
the picture I had taken of Naomi on the train with my bag, this is the picture right here. I said, post that picture. You know, it's not an Instagram model picture, but post it and share the story because this is some real stuff that you went through. And I always tell people I don't only share the good stuff. I want to make sure that I'm sharing as much as possible because I want everyone who watches me, everyone who follows me to know that if I can do it, you can do it. It's just about doing it and there's nothing, I don't want to say there's nothing special about me. There's something special about me, but there's something special about everyone and all you have to do is tap into that, right? So I post it. This morning I wake up. I do a 25% sale on my sweatshirts because I'm like, you know what? I need to move some sweatshirts. Like I need, I need to, time is dwindling down. So I wake up this morning, 11 sweatshirts sold excited about that like okay I made X amount of dollars that's gonna leave you know I need to make this much more um, I check my DM and this woman DMs me and she says to me hi Chris I follow your IG and I can't begin to count the number of happy tears I've cried reading your post you encourage and inspire me thank you for sharing so much of yourself with the world thank you for your transparency and genuine desire to help and change lives because you've been a blessing to me I'd like to bless you and your son Please let me know what app I can use to send you a little something. Venmo, PayPal, Cash App, etc. And your username, God bless. Always love SP. And then she says, By the way, if you choose to share this, I just ask that you don't disclose my identity or username. I'd like to just bless you. Nothing more, nothing less. So, of course, I post that on my Insta story. I blur out her name. I just say thank you. You know, I thank the universe this morning for just... Sending me people who don't know me from a can of paint, but when I'm speaking some real shit and they know that I really mean it and I'm really going through it, they, you know, real recognize real, that's where that comes from. So those people, like, you know who you are. I don't know who everyone is individually, but it's a vibe and it's a feeling. And sometimes when I don't have something or the universe sways and it's in my way and I'm just thankful, I always know that it's because there's people who I'm helping. Um, so I read this, I'm grateful. I go to the gym. And I work out because I've been staying really disciplined and consistent on the workout thing because it's helping me physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And it's just that thing that I can hold on to that I know that I just have to put the work in and I'm going to see the results. And that parallels, you know, my life in general, put the work in, the results will come. So I get back from the gym and you ever be so broke that you don't want to check your bank account and you just avoid it for a couple of days, you know, around what is going to be in there, but you just don't want to look. Um, I said, you know what? Check your bank account. Check my bank account. I did the calculations. I made this much profit off of my hoodies. You know, I'm hosting this event on Sunday. I'm getting paid this amount. Um, this is the amount that I need, right? A thousand dollars. I'm like, I just need to make a thousand dollars this week. I open up my PayPal account. And I just want to show you guys. I open up my PayPal right after that. And that amount was in my PayPal account. Instant tears. Like, first and foremost, thankful to this woman who we always talk about, you know, women not supporting each other, black women not supporting each other. This woman who doesn't know me from a can of paint who takes the time to read my long ass captions because you know they're long, um, who isn't judgmental, who can see how much I genuinely love and care about my son, um, and how I'm taking the harder route, you know, to, to fulfill my destiny, right? It's not even so much, I used to say follow my dreams. It's not, it's fulfilling my purpose. Like that is the commitment that I've made and for someone who doesn't know me to send me a thousand dollars and a thousand dollars is exactly what I said like you can't ask for something if you don't know what you're asking for I had to look at my bank account and be okay with what it said and be okay with knowing that I needed this amount you know in my mind it's oh my god I have to make this amount in this month or realizing and understanding that the universe is always going to provide for me and trusting it and really trusting it, not just saying it, not just tweeting it, not just posting about it, but trusting it in a way to say, I'll be okay. And I think that by me continuing to get up and go to the gym, by me not being frantic and calling people for help and relying on my gifts and my tools and my platform and my mind to say, 
you have enough, you are enough, you have everything you need. That's what people mean when they say that. They don't mean you have the amount exactly right now in your account that you need. It's you have all of the gifts and all the talent and all of the health and all of the energy and all of everything. You have to use everything that you have and you have to dig deep. And when you do that, like when I dug deep and I shared about my groceries being stolen and I shared my optimistic outlook, which is something that I always do. I'm very optimistic. The universe paid me in this woman and allowed her to use her gifts and allowed her to use her resources and allowed her to you don't send somebody a thousand dollars if you don't connect with them and if you don't like you i'm just going to talk to you directly if you're watching this you doing that made me like realize something in myself that other people have been realizing other people have been seeing it gets hard for me to see it because I'm in the thick of it all, but you sending me a thousand dollars, like, and the, the weight that just lifted off of my shoulders in that moment was crazy. And I'm crying so much because I don't get to be emotional and I don't get to cry because I don't have time. I have bills to pay. I have things to do. I have schools and people I owe money to. Like, there's all of these things and all of this pressure on me and I still have to be happy or I get to be happy and I get to smile and I get to raise my son in a way that I feel like he deserves you know it, it becomes a lot and I'm not a victim because I chose this um, but I'm thankful and I'm grateful that what I've chosen to believe in is true and it's true because I believe in it and if you just think about that for a minute you get to choose what you believe, but then when you believe it, it will take care of you. So you have to choose to believe in yourself. You have to choose to believe in other people. You have to choose to believe in the truth. You have to choose to believe that you have a purpose. And that takes work. So when people say that manifesting is easy, you have to do the work that is stopping you from what is already yours. You have to do the work that is stopping you from resisting what the universe wants to give you and I use the universe and God you know interchangeably I don't even like to say God that much because I feel like when people say that they start to separate what God they worship to you know and they start to have differences but when you say the universe the universe is God the universe is vast there's only one and we live in it you know what I'm saying and when you do good people do good and you don't have to worry about where it's going to come from, how it's going to come. You have to know that it's going to come. And, you know, thank you, SP, that's what she signed her name as, for just catching me this time. Because I started to not lose faith, but I started to get exhausted. And I started to really see myself changing. And I was making a choice, you know. I think my mom said to me the other day, or someone said to me the other day, you know, go get a bartending job. And I started to think about it. And I'm just like, yo, you said you're not going to do that anymore. Trust yourself. You know, rely on, on what you have and it'll be enough. So that is what pushed me back to YouTube. If you sat and watched this whole video, I thank you. You know I talk a lot. But SP, ma'am, even my mom told me, she said, tell that woman that I said thank you from your mom. Thank you, and it's not about, thank you for the money, don't get me wrong. Thank you so I can pay this bill and I can continue to do what I'm doing, but thank you for listening, for reading, for believing in me, for relating to me, for understanding, and for working as hard as you work to even have a thousand dollars that you could just send a stranger, you know, that you don't know from anyone, but I thank you. I thank everyone who, even if you can't send me money, just sending me vibes and really cheering for me from the sidelines because I don't see you all the time you know with social media it gets hard to keep track but I feel it and I thank you and um I'm back on YouTube y'all so here we go I'm not even gonna edit this video I'm just gonna put it straight through here we go today is Wednesday I think that Sundays would be a good day to post weekly YouTube videos I'm committed and I am just gonna share this journey you know by asking it is given I'm gonna put the link right here um, read that book it changed my life and um, every day is Christmas thank you